All right, so now we're gonna talk about some examples of functions and how to use function notation. All right, so here are some examples. Uh, f of x equals 3x squared plus seven. We got y equals x to the third plus x plus six, all over seven minus x to the fourth. We got g of t is sine of t. These are all functions written in function notation. So you can write it as just x with independent variable, sorry, we can write it as just y with independent variable of x, or you can say this is a function of x, or maybe we have a whole different variable and we have a function of t, but it works the same way, right? We have something that goes in that represents our domain. So everywhere we see an x, the values we can plug in are part of the domain of our function. All right, and so the output, the things that come out, are gonna be the range. So we still have domain and range. Again, all the things we can plug in represent the domain of our function. Everything that comes out is the range. All right, so domain are the x values or things that go in. The range is the stuff that goes comes out. All right, so let's look at this next thing. We have f of x is seven minus two x minus x squared, and we want to determine f of negative one. All right, again, this negative one is an x value. f of negative one is the thing that comes out. It's our y value. All right, so f of negative one, well, we just put negative one in the x position. And then solve. All right, so negative two times negative one is a positive two. Then we got minus negative one squared is positive one. So that's eight is our answer. All right, so this eight that we got, is it an X value or a Y value? All right, so remember X is the thing that goes in, Y is what comes out. So this is a Y value. So we found that F of negative one equals eight. And if we wanna write it as a point, we could do the same thing where the x value is negative one and the y value is eight. So these are all the same. All right, so let's work on functions and how they work in example three. All right, so example three says, if a is a positive real number, determine the following values for this function. So this function is f of x equals x divided by five minus x. So remember, x is the thing that goes inside, right? This x is here and it's here. So the x actually goes in two places in this function. So let's look at the first one. f of the square root of a plus 2. So this square root of a plus 2 is acting as our new x value. So when we look at our function f, instead of x, we're going to use the square root of a plus 2. All right, and I want to make sure I subtract all of x, so I'm going to put parentheses here, just so we're 100% sure that this is all of x right here. Right. let's do another one. All right, here we have our function listed twice, so we're gonna to have to do all of this twice, where the square root of a is our new x, and then we're gonna use two as our new x. So we're gonna to have to do this whole process twice. 
So instead of x, we're using the square root of a plus, and instead of x, we're using 2. And we can actually simplify this one, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify. Because 5 minus 2 is 3. I always like to box my answer so we're very clear where the answer is. All right, finally, we have f of a squared plus 1 and then plus 3. So our new x is x squared plus 1. Is 3 also our new x? No, because it is not inside of our function. This 3 is something we're just going to add on later. Again, I don't just want to subtract a squared. I want to subtract this whole x, a squared plus 1. And then plus 3 at the very end. And then sometimes you'll have to construct a function based on some information. So let's look at the information and then we're going to write a formula for our function. So we're going to put it all together. All right, so we're going to start with the number x. So we're going to have x. And then we're going to square it. So I'm just going to put the pieces here and we'll put it together later. And we're also going to subtract it from three more than what we started with. So when you hear words like more, that means we need to add. So we're going to do 3 plus what we started with, which is x. So I'm just writing the pieces. We're going to put it all together later. Then we want to divide the result by 1 more than the square root of the original. So again, we have another more here. So 1 more than the square root of the original, and our original is x. Okay, next we need to square that result and add the number we're starting with. So it's unclear what we're squaring. So let's just say we're going to square something and we're going to add what we started with, which was x. Now I think we have everything we need to put our formula together. So again, if you want to pause this to make sure you have the pieces, definitely pause the video. And then we're just going to go, with, go in order. So we're going to start with the number x, and we're going to square it, and we want to subtract it from 3 more than what we started with. All right, so subtract it from something, that means we need to start with something and then subtract this. All right, so you may see, oh, I wrote this in a bad order. Let's start with the 3 more and then subtract our x squared. All right, I want to keep this together. All right, so we squared x, and we subtracted it from 3 more than what we started with, our x. Then we're going to divide all of it by 1 more than the square root of the original. That's what we have here. And then we're going to square this result, which means we're going to square everything we have here and add the number we started with. So we just built out this function.